18 hours of work compressed into just a few minutes. This is how I created this stylized mine in 3D, starting from simple shapes and ending with a clean, organized result separated into pieces and ready to build more. Today I'll walk you through a summarized version of my workflow step by step showing you what led me to the final result. As a channel member, you get access to the full 18 hours video without time lapses or audio, showing every step from start to finish. If you'd like to see this and much more, I invite you to join the channel. Thank you all for your amazing support. To start, it's important to highlight my workflow. I'll be showing you the whole process throughout the video, and we will begin with the first step, deep lockout. During the blockout process, I created an idea of what the final model could be. Without starting from a clear concept art or a sketch, building everything without guidance can become difficult or inconsistent. That's why beginning with a blockout to predefine ideas and set the proportions of each object is ideal. This is where you can really express your creativity, because the blockout is a fundamental step to imagine and move forward. I recommend keeping plenty of references at hand so you never run out of ideas while working on the blockout. Don't hold back on models, later we can remove or even add more if needed. To cut a cube and create a low poly rock, we can use the bisect tool located in the mesh menu. By right clicking, you can assign a shortcut to make the process faster. I have mine assigned to a mouse button. You can build these rocks piece by piece just like I'm doing, or use other methods such as generating rocks or cliffs procedurally. Since I'm creating this as part of a modular pieces pack, this approach works best for me. And once this is done, we move on to the next step, separating the block out into individual pieces. In this step, all we need to do is extract the pieces we consider essential from the block out, rocks, fences, part of the structure, and so on. This way, we are already organizing the key elements for building the final model. With these pieces separated, we know exactly what will be used later and we can focus only on these unique assets, sculpting them, creating UVs and texturing them. Here you can also refine some of the pieces you created during the blockout, adding subdivisions, bevels, or any extra details you need. You can also take this moment to add props you might have forgotten but consider necessary. In my case, I added a barrel and now while editing this video I realize there are other props that would have fit perfectly like tools, a shovel or a pickaxe for example. In this process, I also take the chance to create a few variations of the props, like broken versions, for example. This way we have more pieces that can improve the final model with extra detail and variety. And once we have everything separated, modeled and organized, we move on to the next step, the sculpting process. For the sculpting process, I use my stylized brush pack, which you can find on any of my pages along with other resources used in this video. This helps save a lot of time when adding details during the sculpting process. To sculpt the rocks, I mainly use scrape type brush and add details with several other to achieve that stylized look and avoid overly sharp edges. I also use some brushes that add cracks and surface variation to give more depth to the formations. I want the final result to look like this, since the sculpting supports the texturing process, I like to keep it clean, well defined and without excessive detail.
Make sure to sculpt all the necessary pieces as this information is crucial for texturing later. It will give us the stylized touch we need and save a lot of time during the texturing process. For the wood, I simply use Blender's default sharp crease brush to achieve this result at the end. And for the concrete blocks, I use basically the same sculpting process I applied to the rocks before. Once everything is sculpted, it's time to move to the UV mapping process and create the low poly version. To optimize the rocks, I simply use the decimate modifier as usual. This reduces each rock from hundreds of thousands of polygons to just a few hundred. It is important to note that this works best for rocks or similar pieces, but for man-made models it is better to optimize them using other methods. Explaining the entire UV process and all the technical details in a short video it is very difficult, but basically what we do is add seams and sharp edges on the corners or 90 degree angles. This ensures good shading while preparing the piece to be ungrabbed. If you want me to make a full video on the UV process, please let me know in the comments. Also, don't forget to assign a material to each model group in an optimized way, for example rocks, props, structure and so on. Once this process is finished, we move directly on to creating DID maps. ID maps are basically color groups assigned to the high poly model, or in this case the sculptor. Each piece gets a different color, for example blue for the rocks, orange for wood, green for metal, and so on. This helps later in Substance Painter to define where to apply certain materials using these colors as masks. You could skip this step, but sometimes working with ID maps is more efficient and convenient than using polygon fill. Now let's move on the baking and texturing process in Substance Painter. First, we need to export all our high poly models groups and then the low poly ones. This way, we will get two FBX files the low poly, which will receive the details from the high poly, capturing all the sculpting details while saving thousands of polygons. This process is simple, but it requires knowing certain techniques before exporting, such as separating pieces with matching names and different suffixes. I have a full video on the channel explaining this step by step if you want to learn more. I will use my Stylus Smart Material as a base, you can find it in the description if you want to achieve results like me and save time as well. Once everything is texturized, you need to export the textures back to Blender. You can use this preset if you don't have one. Just make sure to select OpenGL for the normal map if the textures are for Blender or Unity and DirectX if they are for Unreal Engine. With the node granular add and enabled, you can simply click on the principal BSDF node and press Ctrl Shift plus T to automatically assign each text to the corresponding material. And the next step, probably the most fun one, is building our final model. Music 
This is where you have almost complete freedom to build whatever you want with the pieces you have already created. You can make variations or even entire scenes. You can also create groups, for example, using planks to make fences or debris or rocks to build walls inside the mine. I recommend to apply the decimate modifier to rocks that might have too many unnecessary polygons when grouped, as this modifier can reduce them by up to 50%. Then, of course, we need a ground material, so this is the next step. To create the ground, I made 9 planes, each one 200 cm by 200 cm, merged them, and added subdivisions. I enabled tiling, sculpting, and used my brushes to quickly shape the ground, adding some weird details with levels and some small pebbles. Then, I repeated the baking process in Substance Painter and started texturing something simple, again using my base material, so I decided to give it that drier look that rather than a green one, since based on my references, mines are usually located in desert or mountainous areas. This time, I decided to use a hate map to give a realistic relief. I exported this texture to use in Blender, the hate map, by simply adding polygon density to the ground and applying the texture through the displace modifier, we can achieve that realistic look to rain. It's also important to use a decimate modifier to optimize and prevent the ground from having hundreds of thousands of unnecessary polygons later. Once I finished this process, I moved on to creating some foliage in Photoshop. Here you can use any drawing software, but make sure to use the ground color you created as a reference. This way the colors will complement each other and you can add that ground color to the base of your plants so they blend correctly. Just play with your creativity, check references and make something you like. If you don't know how to draw, you can try, but I am not an expert either. You could also model the plants in 3D and create PBR textures, which is also valid. Personally, I prefer to use the 2D method because I like it more, but it depends on the project you are working on. Start creating some plant groups that you can later add to your model art pieces folder and use it in other creations.
And finally, the stylized man is complete. I sincerely hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to support me, there are many ways to do so, but one I really appreciate is leaving a comment with the feedback to help the video reach more people too, and subscribing to the channel if you'd like. Thank you to the channel's members who support my content month after month. Remember, all the resources are in the video description and the full 18 hours video from start to finish with no audio and no time lapses is available exclusively for you members. Thank you so much for watching and I see you in the next video.